Hey, everybody. <clears throat> it is October 5th. 5th? 5th. 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 I sound like the same day from the Brady's. October 5th, 2023. Started 2023. It is 7.59, 8 o'clock p.m. I think I'm... I'm in Nebraska. Nebraska? I barely even do her. I'm punch drunk, so this should be a fun video. I my whoop says I'm at 1% recovery. I've been drinking emergency and sucking on vitamin C and eating oranges and drinking orange juice all day. I'm at about 12 hours of driving. I did take a couple of breaks. I'm about at the brink of looking for a place. So next, like, Love's truck stop. Within, like, the next hour, I'm probably going to stop. But I wanted to... Uh, how do I address this? So often... When I make these videos, I'm listening to something or thinking about something in silence or listening to another person, and it sparks something in my brain that I think would be useful to other people. And there is a person that does a podcast that's philosophically based that in the past I used to watch quite a bit of and as time went on I had a harder and harder time listening, appreciating, enjoying and I can't make it through even three minutes of their podcast now and then every couple of months I just say I really enjoyed that person I did enjoy that person their work and these particular topics were amazing I'm not going to mention who it is in, in, in that's why, I, and I'm only bringing it up because it, it, it was what sparked this conversation. And I really wish the best for this person. But I feel as if, excuse me, huh, sorry. Dogs get sick. I'm, I'm, I'm sick as one right now. I, I really enjoyed this person, and I, I think they're still doing a lot of good. So I don't want to trash them or whatever. But for me, I noticed a big change in their personality. I think they might be uh, in a little bit of an echo chamber, and they might be a little upset, a little bit bitter. Because every time I turn in, in, into this particular podcast, it's one thing if you, it, it, you know, if you want to do a well thought out criticism of, of something, that's fine. And it's another thing if you're confident. There's nothing wrong with confidence or high self esteem, but. One thing that just emotionally strikes me, that irritates me when I listen to this particular podcast, is there's always a snarky laughter that goes along with whatever thing um, they're about to talk about or criticize. And I don't know if this comes from the fact that this person is one was originally raised by a single mother or two uh, hangs around their wife and their daughter a lot because they have a very feminine personality for a male and that's not necessarily a negative thing but if you have a good argument and you want to counter argue something it, it I don't know it seems like you're poisoning the well emotionally and I know this person was a debater for a long time, and I don't particularly care for debate. Uh, it's, you know, it's the idea is to win. I, I mean, I guess you could say that it's win-win because if you debate and you win the argument, then the other person has to 
themselves. You can see their, their point to the right thing, but it doesn't necessarily mean that the truth has been discovered in a debate. Whereas if you have a discussion on two sides, you could talk back and forth about a particular topic with the idea that both people are curious and they're learning about the topic. And I mean, maybe I was more naive and less um, aware of this going on, but I don't find it particularly entertaining when somebody's about to attack somebody and they're not a comedian and they're kind of laughing at it like oh this is just such a ridiculous idea and they're laughing and it, it, the, it almost seems disingenuous to me um, like oh it's so crazy that all of you believe this thing about this particular thing but I know better <laughs> <laughs> so let me explain it to you because it's 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 really I mean it just makes you laugh and then this deep like uh, and I mean maybe it is real it seems very uh, theatric to me but this really isn't about this particular person I wish them the best even though I I myself am uh, quite the asshole I don't, I don't think this is a situation that requires that. I just turn off the podcast and don't listen. But I wish I could listen to the podcast more. I think it has interesting topics. And every time I turn it on, I want to really listen. But within five minutes, they're, you know, stroking themselves off or, or laughing at somebody else like they're better. And to me, it be, has become a turnoff. So I was just reflecting a little bit after listening to that, thinking about myself and... When I'm in certain situations like this, how I react, and I don't know, I, I, I don't, so I will listen to NPR and laugh because I find, some, I do genuinely find it funny because of the huge contradiction, but I also laugh because I find it so clever. I find the propaganda so clever and well designed and well scripted and layered if you listen to it over a couple of hours. So I do I do laugh at like NPR the ri ridiculousness of NPR. Like there was like um, you know uh, a, a guy that did you know uh, five or ten minute interview about masks and how important masks are and how. You have to protect yourself and you can't get any water droplets through it and you can't let COVID pass through it and the masks are very important. Without the mask, we'd all be dying and they help you and it's a sterile environment and on and on and on. And then bam, cut to the very next um, thing was a young girl in middle school who was selling masks that she pinned flare onto. And I, I was just, I mean, just picturing this. So it's like, I don't know who put that together. If it's a joke on their end because they just know it's all propaganda. If it was mixed, misspliced, or people just don't pay attention, or they're so into the propaganda that they don't listen to the reality. But can you imagine having, that is just funny, hilarious, like Saturday Night Live skit to me, where there's a political channel that claims to be neutral, like all things, um, I think what it's called, I think it's like all things discovered or all things thought about or whatever, basically. Like, well, don't worry about it. All things considered, that's what it is. We've considered every possible thing. And so you don't have to even worry about it. We, we brought it to you. We've, get, we've come up with all the angles. We've looked at this from every side. And masks to 100% needed because of sterilization and no water droplets and they gotta be N95 or better or N99. And then the next scene, young girl pins, puts holes in a mask to pin flare on them or multiple ones, depending on what you purchase, to make people wearing masks seem cooler so that more people wear masks. And it's like, you're literally poking holes in your own theory. And that one, that one had me chuckling. So I don't, I don't necessarily think that you can't laugh at things that you consider um, your opposition. 
but there's a particular way, like a, con like a condescending type laugh, like above type laugh, it becomes very frustrating. So anyways, there's a really good book written by, um, if you're familiar with Anne Rand, I think it was her boyfriend or her, lo or her lover, her lover that she made love to, uh, Nathaniel Brandon, called Six Pillars of Self-Esteem, where it talks about building your self-esteem. It talks about self-esteem as a resource. So instead of it being a destination that you're at, it's a you know lifelong goal to work on your self-esteem. And it talks about all sorts of topics. And it also talks about uh, the realistic aspects of self-esteem. Like if you do something negative, and you're like, well, my you know self-esteem's low. Well, then you need to analyze that situation. And if you did something bad that you shouldn't do, then you shouldn't have high esteem for yourself. Like if you punch somebody or hurt somebody or stole something from somebody, like a whole list of negative things that you can do. And then you're like, oh, my self-esteem is low. It's like, well, it, it should. You shouldn't have esteem for yourself if you're stealing. So if you're gonna fix your self-esteem, then you need to internalize that you no longer are going to steal. And once you're not a thief anymore, you're like, okay, now I can have esteem for myself because I'm not a thief. Uh, but if you steal again, you, you know, you got to get to the roots of why you're stealing. And why that should be a positive thing. So if you're stealing and your self-esteem is not going down, that's actually a problem. And you need to figure out why you're, you, f you find taking stuff from other people as a moral high ground act or whatever. But I digress. So in our everyday lives, I guess the question for me, just listening to this is, how do we keep ourselves in check where we can have a positive self-esteem, a positive ego? I don't think you should be trying to get removing your ego. I think your ego is a good um, compass uh, along with self-esteem to keep you in check. And you should be checking in with your ego and you should be checking in with your self-esteem. Uh, you know, uh, not that they're separate from you, but they're, they're, they're part of you and they can fluctuate based on uh, certain situations. So you don't want to end up like uh, Daedalus and Icarus flying too close to the sun with wings held on by wax and fall to the ground. So you need to keep your ego in check enough that you don't fall to your death. And But you need enough stuff to see that you can actually fly and the next confidence and ego to, to believe that you, you can accomplish things. So I'm just kind of thinking about myself and and I, I don't know. So sometimes I say some certain things and after the fact I think to myself, why, why, why did I say that? Did I actually say that to just be authentic? Was I not thinking and I was just being, you know, 100% truthful? Would it hurt somebody? I'm never trying to say something that's hurtful to another person. I might make a joke that can be, that's supposed to make everybody laugh and somebody might not like the joke and they take it in a negative way. Um, but the intention is not to hurt them, it's to it's just to make them laugh. Or I might be in a situation where, for instance, I've shared what I make and I've shared my income and I've shared my strategies for a business that I've grown with some people. And the individuals and, 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 and people had different reactions. So two of the people that I shared shared it with 
had a ne negative reaction and they kept saying like, oh, like, why are you bragging? And the other person is like, oh, why are you always competing with me? And so I immediately, re you know, uh, knee-jerk reaction, I apologized. I said, oh, I, I'm sorry that you, you know, that you're feeling uh, like I'm competing with you. Not my ten and I wasn't, I wasn't bragging. And I kind of felt felt bad about the situation, so you know, I I apologized the second time. But as my relationships went on with those people, I realized that the person that kept saying, "Why are you competing with me?" and I wasn't competing, I was trying to share my information with them so that they can improve. I realized, oh, they're projecting. They're competing with me and losing. So when I show them my strategies of what I did, along with the income attached to that, so they know if you follow that path, what you can make for profits, they don't put themselves in my shoes as if they can repeat that and, and do that. They just see me showing that and think that I'm competing. So then I started looking at what they sent me and I was like, oh, this stuff that they're sending me, I thought that they were sending to help me build but they're sending this to compete with me. So I was like, I gotta understand that about this particular business relationship. And then the other person that thought that I was bragging, I was helping them build their business and they asked me like a week prior, you know, what the what they could expect for income. And I said, when I put the numbers together, I'll send you something. So I put the numbers together and then with no uh, like preface to it, I kind of just shot it out thinking that they would remember the last time we talked. I shot the numbers out to them, but they had forgot about the fact that they asked for it. And so they emotionally were in a bad place. But then I just realized that so this person is not in a financially good place. And so when they see that other people are doing better, they also have a, a, a Jones versus Jones mentality. So it's, it was a competitive edge, but in another way. Now, meanwhile, I have other friends that are in successful businesses, and I sat down to them and showed them some of the structures and some of the numbers, and they just took notes. So they said, oh, okay, so here, this is this, and this is like a, this is a really good one, like this is a 20% margin with like a 50% profit and it's this company, but it takes like four months to, to build up the, the relationship with this company so you can start making this. And then they have a product line that's this big. And so they saw it for what it was. They saw it for um, that I was opening and being transparent with my books, my data, my research, my education, and showing the receipts that it's possible instead of just talking to them and when I walked away from these uh, relationships and I looked back at that I realized that it's a ego and a self-esteem thing so the people with the the healthier egos and the healthier self-esteem are the ones that are comfortable taking notes and learning and falling in second in line but the person that was uppity in verbal and confronted me a little bit more aggressively and in a negative way, even though they were assertive, it came from a place of uh, a lack of self-esteem, a lack of understanding, and a like uh, a, a, a past trauma probably of them having to work against other people. Like they feel like it's other people versus them. They don't have a partner. They don't have a teamwork. Uh, when it comes to finances. So a lot of people uh, think that it's like a, you know, a dog-eat-dog. Dog. It's a dog-eat-dog dog world out there. And, yeah, there is some people that have a dog-eat-dog dog mentality. You just don't do business with them. And, but, you know, but there's always going to be two people with a dog-eat-dog dog mentality and they'll work together. Um, but there's plenty of people that that want to have a win-win negotiation situation or a win-win-win negotiation situation and they want to bring up everybody around them up. I'm not, you know, a multi-millionaire or anything by any, by any means, but I got 
couple of business plans and some investing with crypto that goes pretty well. And it's kind of sad because my other friends aren't in that situation. So over the past five or six years, I've been able to travel more, do more things, have so much more free time. And when I invite people to do stuff, they can't do it. And when they ask how I'm doing it and I try to show them, they get upset rather than ready to dig in. And that's fine. Everybody's going to have their own thing, their own, their own way, their own strategy. But what does any of this mean to you? Back to knowing thyself. One, if you haven't read it, I would highly suggest if you're having self-esteem issues or if you'd like to learn more about your self-esteem, get Nathaniel Brandon's Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. And then you can still, even though he passed, and this is kind of crazy, the day I finished reading the book, I had been putting it off and I had read a little bit of the chapters here and there and I had done some worksheets in the past, but I never sat down and read the book in its entirety. I sat down and read the book cover to cover and the day that I finished the book, he passed. I went to write him an email to thank him for the for the book. And I typed in his name online to see what his email address was or his publisher's email address. And the news said that he had passed. And I was like, that's, that's, that's sad, that's crazy. But anyways, I would recommend reading that book doing some of the worksheets if you haven't already building some self-esteem even if you have good self-esteem it's a good way to teach you to, have, to, to constantly check in but I would also um, encourage you to look at some of the relationships in your life that are, are like good and wholesome and you have a good connection with them and then some that are a little bit or oil and water where you butt heads and take a step back and be a little empathetic and put your shoe put yourself in the shoes of the other person or sympathetic depending on you know if you've been there before or not and and and, and look at the situation and say oh okay I, I, I get what's happening now they keep saying this and I'm ignoring them. I'm not being a good listener. You know, it's like, it's like White Man Can't Jump, the first one with Wesley Snipes and uh, Woody Harrelson. It's like, you're listening, but you're not hearing me. Or you're hearing, but you're not listening. I can't remember which way it went. But I had a friend that I was trying to help. And every step of the way, they just kept saying, I don't want to do X, Y, and Z. And I was like, yeah, but if you do X, Y, and Z, it'll, co it'll cost you half the money and half the time. And this is what I do. It's A, B, and C. And they were like, well, I'm doing this. This is my system. I was like, no, I get that that's your system. But this system right here is less money, less time. So do this. And I just kept arguing with them. And then one day I was just like, oh, okay. Like, whether they know it or not, and I don't want to get in fight with my friends and argue with them. I'm not listening to them properly. They're saying, I am not interested in making more money in less time. I'm interested in continuing the plan that I have that I feel comfortable with. Comfort is more important to me than money or time. And the current system that I have makes me more, it makes me comfortable. So maybe in the future they'll change, but in the current thing, I every time I see this business partner, I was just arguing with them and saying, you can try this system here. It takes me a lot less time. It costs me a lot less money. And they're like, no, I do this, this, and this. And I said, yes, but this, this, and this. And, and then I just one day I was like, oh, okay, I'm not listening. They're, they're not interested in more money and less time. And to me, that I just thought unfathomable. I'm constantly looking to be more efficient and make more income. Um, and, and so, I guess going back to the podcast that I was listening to, I was just trying to reflect on 
like is it me or is it them is it that is it the relationship that I have with that podcaster or is it the podcaster that I'm not listening to and I just realized like that the, the podcast is no longer for me the podcast is for people that like snark and they like laughing at the enemy and they like to feel superior and while I do believe philosophy is superior to um, all other techniques of ways to navigate your life and that you know the love of wisdom philosophy is is superior part of that love of the wisdom is realizing that to me at least is that the that wisdom is is uh, something that is sweet like honey so you don't have to uh, poison it with you know to make it bitter and, and some people are into that some people like um, like snark like, I, I also don't listen to Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro is, like, got a lot of snark. Um, I think Steven Crowder is another one. It's a little different. It's a little bit more, but, it's, but they're all making fun of the opposition, and people get a kick out of making fun of the others. And... Um, I don't know. It doesn't seem like it's for me. I guess is the best way to put it. I can't think of a... I mean, morally, there's no initiation of violence if somebody is being <coughs> snarky to the opposition or laughing at the opposition or feeling superior. One thing that I will say, I, I do believe when exploring ideas that it creates a barrier to keeping your mind open because like the podcast that I just turned into and they were talking about a particular person's writing they they were just like make fun of the whole thing like none of it's real it's all propaganda it's all bad it's all word salad and it's like it's not it, it it's it's uh, somebody wrote that, you know, a hundred years ago, trying to decipher, and since then we've built on top of it, and they went from saying that, you know what, I, 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 don't, I don't want to talk about that, because I, I, I really don't want to. I don't want to give out too, too much information. I, I, this is not something that's an attack on the individual that's doing it. But there, I immediately saw some uh, contradictions in their, their argument. And this was a person that I, in the past I hadn't seen uh, contradiction in, in their argument. Meaning, you know, they had literally said one thing similar to NPR and then within the next couple of sentences said an another thing basically they said you need to be able to explain something simple and if you can't then you don't know it and then they went on to say that the argument that the person said was useless because it's so simple that there's no purpose in talking about it and it's like well not that the two have to be exclusive, but which is it? Like, are arguments supposed to be so simple that, uh, you know, you can explain it to everybody, children, adults, elderly, mentally handicapped? Or is this person's argument so simple that it doesn't need to be made? And this was, you know, something that they said and we're getting uh, accolades for. Which is why I'm worried that this particular person is living in a 
uh, a bubble of some sort which is a very easy place to get caught up in on the internet um, especially when you're just here like I'm here right now talking to a camera in the middle of nowhere on a road I'm not getting any feedback or questions uh, from any sort of audience or whatever and then in the future if I were to do that it would be an audience that's already here for me so I'd be essentially talking to people that were interested in what I had to say. I'm not going to say fans, but fan is short for fanatical. They're fanatical about the stuff that I talk about. I don't really know where I'm going with this. It's just something that I think all of us should kind of be aware of and self-reflect on. <coughs> And take a moment when we walk away. So uh, I'm pretty outgoing. I'm pretty talkative for the most part in public. But I'm an introvert. So when I get out of those situations, I need time to mentally digest what happens a lot of time. And often I'll sit back and reflect on a situation that I was in and wonder if I made the person I was talking to uncomfortable, if the situation was weird, if I was being creepy, if I was being mean. Because a lot of time I'm just being authentic and fun and thinking that everybody else is being authentic and fun. But not everybody's authentic and fun. Some people are, are closed off and trying to survive. Um, so I think it's important to kind of just take a step back sometimes and look at our personal business, uh, you know, in social interactions, IRL, IRL, in online, but no, but for real, but our online interactions and in our, in our real life interactions. I don't know. I would hope that if, <coughs> so the other thing too, and the last that I'll say, <coughs> Last ever, it's like <coughs> die of the vid vid twenty three is so as somebody that's been on on and offline for a long time, and as I see the bots growing, and there's some real people, and then there's some bots, and then there's some real people with like burner accounts. As I see. Uh, kind of like negative feedback that seems useless uh, a, a protection mechanism when you're online is you kind of just get used to ignoring those people like they got nothing good to say they're just fucking with you with the exception of people that are like trying to make jokes and have fun and, and be part of the be part of the community <coughs> and then you get positive feedback on something else and then you know, if a bot or a robot or an AI says, wow, that was really great, then you try to, you know, your mind kind of says, well, that must obviously be a re real person, but they wouldn't tell me how awesome I am. And they're like, you stink, kill yourself. You're like, well, that's obviously a, a poor AI bot because no real person would think that I, that I stink. So maybe some of it, you know, the, of the, on, the online interaction that you have to be careful with um, is <coughs> when you overprotect yourself from the negativity that can happen in mass because you can get, you know, in, in your real life when you make a comment or a statement, you usually don't get feedback from 26 people. You usually get a reaction where somebody comments back. Like, you, you say something in the conversation, and they say something in the conversation. You don't usually say, one plus one equals two, and they're like, it does, yes. And then they would say, two plus two equals four. <coughs> but online, you say, one plus one equals two, and they're like, you stink! You're right! <coughs> and you don't know, you normally get that type of feedback, uh, criticism, unless you're... Um, <coughs> sorry, apologize. Ranking something. So maybe as you 
progress online with a digital community like that and you learn to ignore the haters and embrace the positivity and love, you lose track of the reality of the situation because you need something or someone to ground you in kind of sounding board back off of of what you're doing. I I don't know. So anyways, that's 35 minutes of of my rambling and my real time live thinking. I'm curious to what you think. I'm curious if you've had this situation before where you've outgrown a content creator or you feel like the content creator and that can be either way like when I say you've outgrown um, it, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that I grew and they stayed the same it could be you grew and they stayed the same or you stayed the same and they grew or you both grew in opposite directions but if you had a situation where you've really cared for, uh, you know, I guess it's a parasocial relationship, sort of, for a content creator, and then as time goes on, you realize, oh, this is not for me anymore. I'm on to this, this, or this. So, how did you handle that? Do you think it was you? Do you think it was them? Do you not care? You know, obviously you're going to care less if it was like, you know, makeup tutorials or silly videos or even comedy. But if you're watching somebody like Andrew Huberman that's like really telling you some scientific terms or Jordan Peterson that's really helping you on a emotional uh, journey, a therapeutic journey where he's almost like a father figure. If you guys outgrow one another, it's going to uh, feel similar to, you know, losing a family member, maybe emotionally at some points, or maybe not. So, <clears throat> I'd, I'd, I'd be interested in other people's thoughts. If you can comment below or ask some questions below, I'll branch off and make some more videos based on those questions. And I hope everybody's having a good night. So, take care. I got about, I don't know, another hour. Still looking for a love's loves rest stop or a pilot or, or whatever maybe a walmart something to crash in so all right take care